So here is a uh, keep in mind one thing the sum of convergent series is always unique if a series is convergent its sum is unique why the limit of a sequence is unique what is the ne definition of sum it is a limit of partial sums and partial sums can converge only to one limit right so limit of a se convergent sequence is unique that implies that the sum of a convergent series is unique suppose you drop some of the terms from a a1 a2 an is a sequence given i want to know that whether it is summable from 1000 terms onwards or not that is equivalent to saying whether it is the series itself is convergent or not because what is left is the only sum of finite terms only right so if so uh, so you can say that the convergence of a series does not depend upon first few terms of the series it is same as the fact that we did for sequences convergence of a sequence depends only on what is the tail of the sequence so convergence or divergence of a series does not depend on the first few terms whether that those are added in the series or not but the sum may change right if you sum it from 1 to onwards or 1000 onwards right the sum may change but convergence or divergence will not depend upon uh, it depends only on the tail of the sequence an which is given uh, cauchy's criteria the which is uh, a consequence of uh, that every a sequence is convergent if and only if it is cauchy a series is convergent when this partial sums converge and partial sums will converge only when the partial sums is a cauchy sequence right so coupled with that fact cauchy criteria that uh, sequence an is convergent if and only if partial sums is a cauchy and that is same as saying given epsilon we can write epsilon delta epsilon and not definition given epsilon right the difference between the nth and the mth term should be small and that is that sum from mod of xn plus 1 to xm should be small for m bigger than n right sn minus sm that should be small so there is nothing uh, uh, is a simple consequence of uh, the fact that every sequence is a sequence is convergent if and only if it is cauchy okay so apply it to the partial sums now here is another simple uh, fact that suppose a series is convergent right then what is the nth term if a series is convergent what is the nth term this is a series whether convergent or not let us not bother right sn is a partial sum then what is sn plus 1 minus sn that is just a n plus 1 right simple arithmetic okay now if sigma an is convergent then in this left hand side if i take the limit n going to infinity then star implies what what is the left hand side limit of the left hand side series is given to be convergent then what is the left hand side that is zero is equal to limit n going to infinity of a n plus 1 right and if you like this is same as limit n going to infinity of a n doesn't matter right 
or I could have just written here S n minus S n minus 1, right? I could have written that is equal to A n, okay? Either way. So, I get a consequence, very simple observation that if a series is convergent, then the nth term in that sequence, right? The sequence of nth term must go to 0, okay? So, a n must go to 0. So, this gives me a necessary condition for a series to be convergent. A series is convergent, then it should necessarily happen that the nth term should become smaller and smaller and go to 0. Okay. So, that is a necessary condition and very useful one because if the nth term does not go to 0, then the series cannot converge. So, not convergence is useful proving. So, that is same as saying if a n is not equal to 0, it is divergent, but if it is, it is only a necessary condition, it is not sufficient. That means, if the nth term goes to 0, that does not imply that the series will always converge. For example, just now we said 1 over n, the series 1 over n is not convergent, right? nth term is 1 over n, that goes to 0. But the alternating series, again the nth term goes to 0, but that is convergent, right? So, this is not a sufficient condition that the nth term should go to 0, it is only necessary, okay. So, may either converge or diverge. So, you can give examples we just now given, okay. You can apply, if, if you like, you can apply it to geometric series, right. We proved for mod r less than 1, for r bigger than 1, nth term will not go to 0 if r is bigger than 1, right. It goes to infinity, so that does not converge, okay. Let us look at this kind of a series, okay. It looks like n square plus 3 n plus 1 divided by 2 n square plus 1. It looks like the numerator and denominator both are increasing, right, at the same rate essentially n square. Right, power is n square. So, when n goes to infinity, it will stabilize somewhere because both are increasing at the same rate. So, how do we analyze that? So, look at the nth term, nth term is n square plus n plus 3 divided by 2 n square plus 1. I want to analyze what happens as n goes to infinity. So, the simplest thing is divide numerator and denominator by n square because I know 1 over power of n goes to 0. So, that gives you 1 plus numerator will give you 1 plus 1 over n plus uh, 1 over n plus 3 over n square, right. And the denominator will give you 2 plus 1 over n square as n goes to infinity, the limit will be equal to numerator will go to 1, denominator goes to 2. So, by the theorems on sequences, if a n is convergent, b n is convergent and b n is not conver convergent to 0, then a n when a n divided by b n is convergent to limit of a n divided by limit of b n. So, that theorem says that the limit of this nth term of this series is converging to 1 by 2, which is not equal to 0. So, this series cannot converge, right, because the nth term does not go to 0. So, nth term that is how it is used to say analyze not convergent of a uh, series. So, this does not converge, right. Now, here are the, the theorems about uh, algebra of limits giving you uh, algebra of convergent uh, sequence. Uh, series. If a n is a series which is convergent, b n is a series which is convergent, you can add nth term of both, get a new series whose nth term is a n plus b n, right. Then what will be the partial sums of a n plus b n? partial sum of a n plus partial sums of 
B n and if a n is convergent then partial sums converges. So, partial sum of the sum will converge to sum of the partial sums by limit theorems on sequences. So, if a n is convergent, b n is convergent, then a n plus b n is convergent and sum is equal to sum of a n plus sum of b n because of the limit theorems on sequences. Same uh, uh, logic applies to the other you can have difference, you can have the scalar multiplication, right. One can wonder what happens if you multiply two series. Can you multiply two series? Doesn't know. You can just look at A and B and if you want, that is one way of multiplication, right. But in the partial sums will not be par multiplication of partial sums, right. So, that will not work out, okay. So, it is only for the additions. Okay. One can think of what could be a way of multiplying uh, series, so that the corresponding result for series is valid. You understand what I am? I am throwing a question. What could be given a series A n, given a series B n, what could be the multiplication of these two series, so that the limit of that product, whatever we define is product of the sums. Think of it, it is a good thing to think, it is possible to do such things, but let us not do into that. So, this is algebra of uh, uh, sums for the convergent series, this is for convergent only. If a n is convergent, if b n is convergent, then a n plus b n that series is also convergent okay? using the sequencing uh, theorems on sequences. Okay. How is that useful? You can always come make examples. Look at this series 2 by 3 to the power n plus 3 by 4 to the power whole to the power n. Is it convergent? So, it is sum of 2. Okay. So, 1 over uh, 2 over uh, 3 raised to 1 over 2 by 3 to the power n and you try to show that both of them are convergent and then the sum will be the, the sum of that. Okay. So, I am leaving for you to check why both are convergent. Okay. Right. Uh, more examples one can give, I think uh, uh, this is not, this is not convergent. Why? Because if it were, right, I know 5 by this is convergent when I subtract, it should give me 2, two by n should be convergent, which is not true, right. So, so you can, one can play with this kind of things. The usefulness of uh, saying that sum of convergent series is convergent, okay. Here is something. Yeah, this is okay. So, let us what I am going to do is I am going to specialize for some time on series with non negative terms only, right. A n's are all non negative. Okay. When A n's are non negative, partial sums are going to be increasing, partial sums are going to be increasing, right, because we will be adding something all the time non negative. Okay. So, either the series will converge if the partial sums are bounded above or what will happen? The partial sums will keep on increasing and go to plus infinity. So, in some in such case when sequences of non negative terms are given series of non negative terms, if convergent we write what is the sum or sigma a n less than infinity. Other only other possibility is it is divergent and in that case sums partial sums converge to plus infinity. So, one writes sigma a n 1 to infinity equal to plus infinity, just a notation, okay? nothing more than that. Okay? Right. So, just a notation saying that they are. Okay. So, here is the one of the simplest tests 
which can help us to analyze convergence or divergence of a series. We are given two uh, sequences of non-negative terms a n and b n. Say that a n is less than b n. Ultimately, what does ultimately mean? From same stage onwards, right? Ultimately means for some stage onwards because it is the tail which is going to matter for convergence, right? So you can write ultimately that is uh, for some n bigger than capital N, a n is less than or equal uh, a n is less than or equal to b n, right? So that means what? Each term of the sequence B n is dominating the term A n from some stage onwards. So, what will happen to the partial sums? Partial sum of A n will be dominated by the partial sums of the series B n, right? Because A n is less than B n. So, if the partial sums of B n s converge, partial sums of A n s are dominated by partial sums of B n. So, that will converge because it is less than or equal to, right. And if A n s do not converge, then B n s cannot converge because A n s are less than B n, right. So, you get two ways of uh, writing it, just writing the partial sums of the corresponding things that if b n s are convergent, if the series b n is convergent, then the series a n is also convergent, right. Is it okay? Because the partial sums of a n will be less than or equal to partial sums of b n and that converges. So, no problem, okay. And because a n is less than b n, if a n is divergent, that means what? The partial sums go to infinity for partial sums of b n s are bigger than partial sum of a n. So, b n s also will partial sums of b n also will go to infinity, right. So, it implies that if a n is divergent then b n is divergent, if b n is convergent then a n is also convergent. Simple comparison of two series from some stage onwards a n is less than b n, okay. Very simple proof. So, no problem about that. So, let us skip the proof. Try to write a proof yourself. What will be involved? Okay, let me just write probably once so that you understand why some minor modifications are required. So, we have got a n less than equal to b n for every n. For every n or from some stage onward that does not matter from some stage onward. So, what is s n equal to? a 1 plus a 2 plus a n will be less than or equal to b 1 plus b 2 plus b n and that is uh, that is s n of this what shall I write for s n of that. Some notation. So, I'll let me write s n dash we are calling that as S n dash, we are calling it as S n. So, this implies this. So, S n dash convergent implies S n convergent. Right? Is it okay? Why? How should I justify? How should I justify this statement? Yeah, these are partial sums only. S n is partial sum, this is a partial sum. Now, we can write this, this is ok, but I am saying this imply. So, this statement implies convergent is or hence S n dash convergent implies S n convergent. Why is that? B n's are not convergent. Yeah, series B n is convergent is same as saying this is convergent. So, this is because series B n is convergent, 
why does it imply sigma uh, S n is convergent? Yes, you have to say something more, right? Bounded by what? Partial sum, this partial sum is less than or equal to partial sum that. So, the claim is S n is convergent, why? What is the reason S n is a sequence of numbers? Why is it convergent? S n prime. See, both are non negative terms, right? So, S n dash is increasing, right? So, limit of S n dash will dominate all S n's, limit of S n dash will dominate all S n's, is it okay? And S n itself is also increasing, is non negative terms. So, partial sums are again increasing. So, this is also an increasing sequence of non negative terms which is bounded above and hence it may it must converge. So, to, we are using both things. If a sequence of if a mono, if a sequence is monotonically increasing and convergent, so what is that what is the limit? Limit is upper bound, right? Least upper bound. So all S n dash for every n is less than or equal to the upper bound, which is the limit which exists. So S n's are bounded, monotonically increasing, so they converge. Right? So that is the argument that we have to supply in between. And similarly, if we want to say that A n's are the sigma A n is divergent. Right? That means what? That the partial sums S n are converging to infinity, right? And S n is less than S n dash. So S n dash also will converge to infinity because they are bigger than S n, and S n is going to infinity. So if A n is divergent, then B n also is divergent. Simple observations about sequences only. Okay, so that is the comparison test. Okay, so let us uh, skip the proof of that. So let us look at examples of comparison test. So we are comparing two. So look at the series. Remember, we did one over n that was divergent. One over n square was convergent. So now we are looking at for any p between. Bigger than zero, less than infinity. What can we say about that? Okay. So let us assume. So it depends on p, of course, because n p equal to one, we know it is a divergent, right? So let us look at when p is between zero and one, then n to the power p, right, is less than or equal to n because p is uh, between zero and one. So what happens to one over n p? That is bigger than 1 over that will be bigger than 1 over n, right? And 1 over n is divergent. So, 1 over n p will be divergent. The sigma 1 over n p is divergent for p between 0 and 1 by comparison test, comparing it with 1 over the series 1 over n, right? Simple observation. So, that is uh, divergent. So, this is divergent between 0 and 1. Let us look at when p is bigger than 2, we know 1 over n square was convergent, right? P was equal to 2. So, let us take p bigger than or equal to 2. What happens to n p and n square? If p is bigger than 2, compare n to the power p and n to the power 2, n square. n to the power p will be bigger than n square right so convergence of 1 over n square will give you convergence of 1 over n to the power p for p bigger than or equal to 2 already proved convergence of 1 over n square already proved divergence of 1 over n comparison gives you for p between 1 and 0 n p is divergent for p bigger than or equal to 2 1 over n p sigma n p is convergent. Between 1 and 2 we have not done anything yet, right? because 
we are just known things, we have to compare it with something known A and B n. A n less than or equal to B n. If you know something about B n convergent, then you can say A n convergent, sigma A n convergent, right. We will do that also a bit later. For example, let us look at this kind of a thing. So, how these things help us analyzing 1 over 2 n square plus n plus 1 kind of thing. It looks like 1 over n square. It looks like 1 over n square. So, can we can we compare 1 over 2 n square plus n plus 1 with 1 over n square nth term? Right? Already 2 n squares so we are increasing denominator, so making it smaller anyway. So, 1 over 2 n square plus n plus 1 that you call as a n is less than or right 1 over n square which is b n that is convergent. So, this is convergent. Right? So, how you think and what you have to compare with that you have to sort of keep in mind. So, this is convergent. I think there are more examples uh, you can study later on. Let us look at uh, something which requires a bit of thought, but not much. Spore is again kind of uh, comparison, but we are going to look at. See, uh, we looked at uh, that 1 over 2 n square and all that and 1 over n square. So, with 2 n square and n square sort of compatible with each other kind of a thing, no? we could compare. So, here we are looking at a n and b n two sequences of positive real numbers only for the time being positive and look at the limit of that suppose that limit exists. Suppose the limit exists and is L. Okay. So, what does the meaning of saying this L exists a n over b n there that means, eventually a n and b n are stabilizing right. They are becoming sort of coming to a common kind of uh, proportion kind of a thing, right. So, the claim is if this limit exists and if this limit is not equal to 0, then you can have a inequality which says for some alpha and beta, alpha b n will be less than or equal to a n is less than or equal to beta times b n if this limit is not equal to 0. In what way that is useful? It helps you to compare a n and b n, right. It says from some stage onwards, you can compare a n and b n, right. So, convergence of one can imply the convergence of other or divergence of one can imply the divergence of the other, right. So, this limit becomes important and if this, okay. so let us look at to first why is this thing happening. So, we, I want to look at uh, a simple you see analysis of real line is coming back to a picture. So, a n divided by b n limit n going to infinity equal to l and that is not equal to 0. So, here is 0, here is l. Right, either on positive side or on the negative side, either side does not matter, it is away from 0. Okay. So, what is the meaning of saying that the limit exists? Limit exists means the terms should come in a neighborhood of that point after some stage onwards. So, let us define a neighborhood like this say L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. So, let us choose epsilon say that. So, if L is bigger than 0 choose say that L minus epsilon is also bigger than 0 then convergence there exists some n naught such that a n by b n belongs to L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. Is that okay? That is simple convergence. It comes in a neighborhood. I want to stay away from 0. So, I have just taken L minus. So, what does that mean? 
that means L minus epsilon is less than A n by B n is less than L plus epsilon, right. And call this number as alpha, call this number as beta. Okay. So, then alpha times B n is less than A n is less than beta times B n. You get the inequality. Simple definition of limit, if the limit is not 0, A n and over B n should stay away from 0, right. That is all. And if this limit is equal to 0 will mean what? So, this was L bigger than 0. Similarly, L less than 0 does not matter, right? Bigger. This is L bigger than 0. If it is less than 0, what will be your argument? So, if L is here, okay, if L is here, then you will have L plus epsilon n, right? Then you will choose epsilon such that L plus epsilon is bigger than 0. Here, it would have taken this. In this case, we will choose epsilon such that L plus epsilon is bigger than 0. So, everything will be inside this. Again, this will be your alpha, that will be your beta. Okay. Pardon? They were positive, I am saying this. Okay. So, it is a valid point. I am just giving you general arguments for any sequence A n and B n not necessarily positive. In our case, other case, this does not matter, right. But in general, I am saying the limit of a sequence, right, if it is not 0, then everything should be in a neighborhood of away from 0, right. Now, if the limit is equal to 0, that is possible, right. So, let us say that limit of a n by b n is equal to 0. That means what? By the same argument, okay, then there exists. So, for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a n naught such that a n by b n between minus epsilon n plus epsilon, right, in a neighborhood of 0. So, that means what? minus epsilon b n is less than a n is less than a n plus epsilon uh, uh, b n times sorry b n times epsilon. But a n in our case all the a n's are non negative. So, 0 less than a n less than epsilon b n because all the ans are non negative. So, if the limit is 0, now you get only one inequality a n and less than or equal to b n, right. But still it gives you a comparison between a n and b n. You can compare a n with b n, right. So, that was the lemma, okay. Now, you can use this lemma in view of the comparison test. Okay. So, what will that give me? If the limit is not equal to 0 of this thing and supposing B n is convergent, then look at this, this part of the inequality A n less than or equal to beta times B n, right. B n is convergent, so that will imply A n is convergent. And other way around, if A n is convergent, I can use this part to say B n is convergent. So, if the limit is not equal to 0 of A n by B n, then either both A n and B n converge or both diverge, right. If sigma A n is converge, convergent, then sigma B n is convergent and other way around. If the limit is equal to 0, then only convergence of B n can apply convergence of A n or divergence of A n can apply divergence of B n, right. It will not give you if and only if. The idea is that comparison test, right, when you want to find the sum of a series, it is only some 
point onwards the things matter right well, how are we getting this are you saying that l minus epsilon l plus epsilon a, a n by b n is in between for n bigger than or equal to n not right so this comparison is valid only for and that is good enough for convergence okay so that gives me that uh, test which is the limit comparison test so either sigma a n by is convergent if and only if sigma b n is convergent right if limit is zero then b n is convergent implies a n is convergent right so how uh, this test helps in analyzing uh, series of non negative terms that is important 